Well then, let's get to our main topic of tonight. I'll take you tonight to uh, the South South State of River State. Well, we know River State, not without some kind of political uh, controversy or the other. Uh, yesterday, a seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Mohamed, has dismissed the suit filed by Senator Magnus Hart, seeking to amend his notice of appeal pending before the court. Senator Abe, who is a faction leader of the All Progressives Congress in River State, had approached the court with a demand from the court to make a final pronouncement on the legality of both direct and indirect primary polls conducted by the party in 2018 in River State. Justice Muhammad Wadi Smith understood, also struck it out for being incompetent and in gross violation of Order 2, Rule 8 of the Supreme Court rules. The High Court in River State had earlier in 2018 barred the party from conducting primaries in the state due to factionalization of the party. The court also nullified the two candidates produced by the factions, lawyer to the Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotimi Amechi, and the one lawyer to Senator Magnus Abe. On Thursday, uh, that means in another two days or so, there might be another Supreme Court ruling. Uh, the consequence of that judgment still remains a bone of contention for the APC. In anticipation of that, uh, the big question is, uh, if the internal crisis of the party is resolved by the Supreme Court, uh, to what effect does that have on the governorship seat in the state after the election has been done? and concluded. And so, uh, let's get the reaction of um, some of the players here. But let me quickly show you uh, what all these means, uh, especially for those who are monitoring closely the politics of River State. So, majorly in River State APC, these two men, you will call them the gladiators, the main contenders. These are the faces of those who are the strong men of the APC. Uh, this man is the leader of a group in the state, and the Minister of Transportation is, of course, another leader, former governor of the state. So, uh, the big question of what the interpretation or the meaning of uh, the Supreme Court judgment of yesterday means for the APC. After that happens, what well, then uh, is the bat battle continue or is it over? The battle, some people call the battle royale. Um, now, now that Mr. Yunsung Wiki of the PDP won the election. Don't forget that the names of the APC were not on the ballot in that election. To what end is all of this battle and trouble within the APC? Now, a big question is, on Thursday, there might be another judgment from the Supreme Court. To what end is that? Well, the myriad of lawsuits. Let's get talking tonight, everyone. Let's put our eyes on these two men. They are one of those who are making a very big uh, control and uh, uh, they're making the decision in the state. We have in our Abuja studio, Senator Magnus Abe will be hearing uh, his reaction on what has happened yesterday at the Supreme Court. And of course, from River State, we have, um, in Pudakot, we have uh, a former lawmaker, uh, Mr. Chidi Law. Thank you so much, Senator, for coming on tonight. Senator, let's get your reaction. What is re your reaction to what has happened uh, yesterday at the Supreme Court? Does this mean that it's over uh, when the Supreme Court ruled out the suit you filed? Uh, sure, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say that um, the Supreme Court of Nigeria is the final court in the land. And um, while that was not the outcome we had prayed for or expected, um, that is a pronouncement of the court. And as law-abiding citizens and as Democrats, we have to live by what the court has decided. But I think that people need to have some basic understanding of what actually happened. As you would recollect, um, the National Working Committee of the party had asked that uh, the states should make a determination as to the kind of uh, primaries that they wanted, whether direct or indirect. In River State, there was an existing court order decision of the court that had nullified the election of a new executive for the party in River State. And so the existing executive at the time made a request to the national for direct primaries to avoid the legal complications that were already evident in the state 
at that time. And uh, we had wanted the Supreme Court to make a pronouncement on the legality or otherwise of that exercise. But because of the delay hearing the case, when the matter was filed, the Supreme Court of Nigeria actually wrote a letter to us the week before the election to say that the case could not be heard because the other faction had written a petition against the judges and therefore the Supreme Court had decided that um, the matter could only be heard after the elections when a new panel will be constituted. So for me as a lawyer, I read that to be a judgment of the courts as far as the issues were concerned because this was clearly a pre-election matter and um, the effectiveness of a pronouncement would have clearly affected the, the party going into the elections. So when the courts wrote that letter, we, I saw it as a decision in itself. And so uh, when the court held this week that um, the suit was not in order because we had removed the names of uh, the candidates for the National Assembly whose election was concluded before the suit was filed, I didn't, that didn't come to me as a surprise when the suit was struck out. So as far as we were concerned, um, the decision to strike out the suit was taken when a decision was taken not to hear the suit before the elections. So it didn't come to me as a surprise. So, uh, and then, Senator... Um, like I've said, that was not the outcome we expected, but we expect that all law-abiding Nigerians would obey, respect, and support the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Uh, Senator, uh, could that mean that that's the end of the road? Uh, because you are asking, uh, you are being that, look, what the uh, Amakri faction of the party did was wrong. So you are staying with what the Supreme Court uh, is saying. So are you agreeing with the fact that the primary conducted in your own case is wrong? Well, that is not uh, what I understand. But if you are agreeing, if you are asking if I agree that that is the end of the road for our quest to try to establish the legality of that um, particular primary exercise, I will say yes. Legally, that has come to an end. Uh, there is nowhere else for us to go. And um, you know, there is a saying that you have to find courage to change the things we can. You have to find the serenity to accept the things that you cannot change, and you pray to God for wisdom to be able to understand the difference. So I think clearly for us as uh, Democrats who had throughout this struggle followed it constitutionally and um, followed it within the ambit of the law, um, that, that, that has come to an end. There is really nothing for us to do again than to accept that um, with that pronouncement of the Supreme Court, we have no other option to pursue the legality of that uh, exercise. So that's where it ends. Let's talk to um, um, uh, Dr. Chidi Lloyd, who joins us via Skype from Port Harcourt. Now, uh, you've heard the reaction of uh, Senator Magnus Abe on this one. Uh, what's the reaction from your own side on the outcome of the Supreme Court judgment uh, on Monday? Oh, well, uh, Sheung, I thank you for this opportunity. The, my reaction as a lawyer, like Senator Magnus Abe, is that the final uh, court on the land had spoken. And uh, no theatrics will change that. The final court has spoken. Uh, and as lawyers, as, uh, just like Magnus Abe, we have to agree with what the final court has said. And this we have been saying, what the Supreme Court did was to... Uh, give vent to what we have been saying ab initio, that in a distinguished Senator Magnus Abe uh, charted this course. He knew the course he was, he charted from day one, uh, when he, he boosted at different quarters, that he was not going to stop at anything but to destroy uh, the right on Honorable Chibike Rotimi Amechi, his benefactor. And uh, he set out on this uh, road to perdition uh, by uh, 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 ganging up uh, people uh, to who, who, who masquerade as uh, functional members of the of the of the All Progressive Congress, and uh, that tussle, that self-inflicted injury, 
led us ultimately to the Supreme Court, and they ensured that uh, we were not uh, on the ballot. Uh, but just as Magnus will say, in one of his uh, uh, landmark uh, celebrations in his house somewhere in Abuja, uh, he, he did say that uh, only God has the final say. Uh, I remember vividly him by seeing him in, a, in an amateur video that went viral at the time, uh, when he agreed that only God had the final say. And that uh, all the efforts uh, 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 to, to destroy the party in the state uh, had, not, uh, had not materialized because God, of course, who has the final say, gave us an opportunity where the Supreme Court justices, seven of them in number, will look at all that had been done, whether they were done uh, with malice. Uh, we will await the decision of the court. But I want to point out quickly that Senator Abe had made some very dangerous insinuations against the Supreme Court when he said that uh, uh, when the Supreme Court wrote to them, uh, they knew that that was a judgment reason. I, I don't expect that of a very senior lawyer like distinguished Senator Magnus Abe, who started, who opened, uh, started his opening speech by pouring encomiums on the Supreme Court, only to go somewhere in the middle of his statement to begin to cast aspersions on the same, uh, uh, on the same, on the same Supreme Court. Uh, as lawyers, we are trained not to, not to uh, comment on issues that the Supreme Court has decided. So that, right. so it is. Okay. So that now puts, that puts faith to all the shenanigans that had happened uh, uh, right from the start. Okay, we'll go back to Senator Magnus Abe, but we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at the implications of um, APC being out of the ballot. Now that the Supreme Court has ruled, maybe some other judgments are coming. They are in the works. What does this mean for the APC, for reverse politics? That's what we're going to discuss next. My panel is still with me, Senator Magnus Abe and Chidi Lloyd. That's next. Join us again, everyone. Hello and welcome back everyone. Let's get back to the conversation. We've been talking about this, the River State APC crisis. These two men uh, may not have the names on the ballot in that election or the, that, that of their party, but a lot of issues has happened over the last few weeks or so. Uh, from Abuja, see the Senator Magnus Abe has been talking to us. And from Port Harcourt is uh, Dr. Chidi Lloyd, a former lawmaker in Riverstead. Uh, the implication of perhaps what this means for the people of Riverstead and the APC is that now that uh, Mr. Yinsom Wiki has won the governor, he's gotten a re-election, what does this mean for your party? Senator Magnus Abe, let's get your quick reaction. What does this mean for the party APC? Uh, are you expecting anything that could change uh, anything drastically for your party? First of all, Sean, let me thank you and to say that um, everybody in Nigeria understands what this struggle was about in the first place. So some of the remarks that was made by Dr. Lloyd was, in my opinion, uncalled for and unhelpful to us in the situation that uh, we have found ourselves. There is no time that I cast aspersions on the Supreme Court. What I said is that we received a letter from the court before the elections to say that the case could not be heard until after the elections. And as a lawyer, I decided to take that as a decision in itself because I felt that for the Supreme Court to intervene effectively in the reverse matter, that would have been done before the elections. So that's my interpretation as a lawyer, and that does not cast any aspersion on the court. <laughs> Secondly, our struggle was about change, doing things differently in the party. We left the PDP because we said that the attitude and behavior of the leaders of the PDP will not help our country and will not help our state. When the PDP decided that uh, 16 people were more than 19, we left there to go to the APC where we promised Nigerians change. And I'm in the APC fighting for that change. I am interested in bringing that change to the doorsteps of Rivers people. 
So our struggle has never been about pulling down anybody. And Shen, you will yourself confess that I have been on this show severally, but I have never at any time said or done anything to try to pull anybody down. I've always tried to stick with the facts as far as the issues in River State are concerned. And we will continue our struggle for internal democracy and for effective inclusion within the All Progressive Congress, because that is the way you win elections. Senator, On uh, the issue of the party being off the ballot, it is really, really unfortunate. Um, it was not what anybody would have desired. But everybody in River State understood that the crisis in the APC would only benefit in some wicked. Everybody knew that. The minister knew that. I knew that. Chidi Lloyd knew that. So anybody who pretends that they did not know that the situation we had in the APC will benefit our opposition is not being truthful. And the person is not being honest. And so we need to actually be able to look each other in the eyes and tell one another the truth and act in such a manner that that truth will be able to help us to overcome our present challenges. Chief Lloyd knows that the beginning of this crisis was when members of our party bought forms from the party to participate in the Congresses and a decision was taken that they were no longer members of the party. That's not what our constitution says and that's not what should have happened. And if we are real Democrats and committed members of the APC, we should have acted at that time to uh, ensure that the right thing was done within the party. But this whole issue has been about trying to prove that certain people are irrelevant and certain people don't matter, and that some people are the party and they can do without others. And I want to say here clearly that they cannot. The whole idea of any one person being able to deliver the APC in River State without the participation and the support and inclusion of others in the party is a mirage, and it will not work. So people let, really need let, to understand let me ask what you, the issues uh, are, the, the, and the, we need to work me, together to, to save... Se Senator, I, I need to you to the and quickly answer to this. And the question is the implication of all this. Uh, has the APC lost hope? that you've lost this election and no remedy can be made uh, in terms of... Uh, because I know on the other side they're saying they're not being rightfully removed from the ballot. Do you think in your own stance that is all over as far as the election of 2019 is concerned? Well, what I want to say is that we are not baby politicians. After the 2015 elections, I can't hear you, Sheung. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Okay, L let, me, let me perhaps take that same yes. question to uh, Mr. Uh, Chidi Lloyd. Uh, as it stands, for your own side, is it all over for you uh, on the Rotimi Amechi side that this election has been won by the uh, uh, PDP and lost by the APC? Of course, you are not, went up, not on the ballot. Or do you have any hope of gaining anything after the election has been won? Now, so I want to quickly, I want to quickly say uh, that I find it very. Hello, Shem. Go ahead, please. Yes, I want to quickly say that I find it very offensive when you you put the photograph of the Honorable Minister for Transportation alongside that of Senator Magnus Abe. The Honorable Minister for Transportation, at no time constitutionally, is barred from contesting. The governorship of River State haven't done haven't done so for an uninterrupted time of, of two tenures. The person that is at war with is with is, that has contention with uh, Magnus Abe is actually Toye Kola. That is the photograph you should be showing, and not the one of uh, Ruth Timia Mechi, who's who has been a uh, boss to Magnus Abe at several times. Magnus, you recall, was but, his, uh, but there we have uh, it, uh, uh, Dr. Okay. Chidi Lloyd. Uh -huh. There we have it. So you go here, Magna Zabe here, and we have the man who won the election there at the center. Yes, I will say so, Shemu. I want to quickly say that uh, uh, I will say so, so Shemu. I want to quickly say uh, that as lawyers, uh, the matter is subjudice. I would not. Uh, all I know is that the All Progressive Congress has uh, appeals lying before the Supreme Court which will be heard on, 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 on Thursday. And that is all I can say in this matter. As to what the judgment portends for us, I, I, I would not, I, I want to be 
I want to uh, to guide myself in order not to say anything that will prejudice the decision of the court. Uh, but as a Christian, as a Christian, as a practicing Catholic, I, I have always prayed that God uh, should do the needful and save River State from the from the shackles of political buccaneers. Uh, that has been my prayer. Beyond All right. That, we, we, we need to leave you there. Uh, but I, I know that uh, Senator Magna Zabe could not hear me. Uh, if, you, if you could use 10 seconds to give your final uh, thoughts, Senator Magna Zabe, you can shoot now. What I will say is that like any other mature political group in this country, we knew after the 2015 elections that there will be elections in 2019. And we had the same time as other political groups and parties to put our house in order and prepare as serious people to take over River State, which we could have done very easily. But because of the attitude and uh, imperial nature of certain persons and the fact, to, the, the need of trying to prove that some people are irrelevant, we found ourselves where we are. I think the proper thing for us to do is to retrace our steps and put our party back together in a manner that will make it an effective political machine to take back River State. That's what we should be doing at this time.